So I paid $175 for this little headless guitar. Is it any good? The short answer is no. All right, guys, so this is gonna be a review video, if you will, of this as Muse headless. They call it a travel guitar. And I, my friend um, suggested that I buy it. I like, to, I love my Kiesel Vader. It's my main go-to for my band. And so the, the, the nuts and bolts of this guitar are just cheap. It's got stainless steel frets, that's great. It's got an innovative looking new tremolo system that I've never seen before. Looks a little complicated. I feel like I'd need a tutorial on how to use it. But um, I tuned it up and played it, and you'll see that in the following video. Um, it plays like a cheap guitar. I've had cheap, many cheap guitars my whole life, and I mean, it is a cheap guitar, but is it worth 175? I think so. Like, it's, it's worth $175, because it's as good or better than any of those at that same price range. Um, I like headless guitars a lot because they tend to stay in tune better, provided that the trim low back here by the bridge is good. And this one, I I'm, I'm just don't know. But would I take it on stage and use it as an actual backup to my to the gigs? Probably not. Um, it, it just is lacking a few things that I absolutely need um, for a guitar of that caliber. And so I've never heard of the brand. It's made in China. It's all over the box. I don't have anything against any products made in China. There's fantastic products made in China all over the world. You know, I don't really, you know, I don't boycott anything made anywhere. Everybody offers up something good. But I love my Made in America Kiesel. It's just so good. Um, and that's what I'll have to do my video on next. All right, guys, it's been a minute since I've done an unboxing or a new guitar video, but... I had a friend who recommended that I get this As Muse electric guitar that's called a travel guitar. And you have to do a little bit of assembly. I'm gonna apologize right now. I just got from the dentist. I'm having trouble even pronouncing words and that part of my lip is obviously messed up. But I wanna do this now because I'm excited about this guitar. So <laughs> I've got to record it now and show you what's going on. So I'm gonna uh, flip the camera around and show you here. It came in this big, pretty big Amazon box and it's a small guitar. I have the black model A HG. They are modeled physically after, in my opinion, the Kiesel Vader, which I have, and I've still yet to do a video on and I need to because I absolutely love that guitar. It deserves a lot of attention. But anyways, this one here just came in. I'm gonna open it up and see what's in that box. All right, so this is what was in that box. It looks like it may, I thought it had to be assembled. And uh, I'm not sure that that's true. Nothing's in that pocket. I've only got one hand obviously, so let me, let me pull this. There we go. This makes it a little bit better. Arm looks ridiculous, but still. This is literally an unboxing. I've never seen this. And uh, that looks like it's got my set of keys there. Really tough to do with one hand. If my wife was home, I'd have her hold that. Right, let's see what we have under here. I'm gonna use my feet to pinch that. There we go. It's already strung up. Look at this. Get this styrofoam out of there. It's already together. I thought I was going to have to assemble it. Let me get my knife. Here we have it. Look at that. It's an odd, I don't think I've ever seen a tremolo like this. It's remnant of the Kaiser. And I can't read this. I need to get my glasses and read this. Let's see. Licensed by KD. Patented, huh? 
looks like you got your tuners here. What, they're indented as if they were going to use a tool. Wow. It looks like a complex trim system. A humbucker, two single coils. And, yeah, a five-way switch. There's no tone pop on that, so. Yeah, it looks a lot like a Strat headless As Muse looks like the brand. I like dark necks, so I'll cut the footage here and then we'll see if I can tune it up and see what it sounds like. All right, this is kind of neat. Don't mind my sandals with socks on there. Flip this thing around and make it a little easier. So this is kind of neat here. This is uh, on the side. So I tried to tune to change the pitch of these with this, and you can do it, but it's very hard. What this is right here, there's a little bitty magnetized piece. You see this? It's actually got a hex head and then a handle. And what you, put, what you do is that magnetized piece will go straight into that, just like that. And now, so, Hang on, I know it's gonna be blurry, but it needs to come up a little, so watch. So I got that one in tune. So you, it looks like you could do this, that little, again, that's a magnetized piece that goes, fits right into this slot. Just like so. Isn't that weird? Kind of sticks out, it protrudes a little bit. I didn't know what it was, but it comes off and it fits into these heads here. So these pieces here, that's where it fits. So I'm gonna finish tuning it up this way. So, so far, Tonally, it sounds pretty thin. I've, I've already played it in the uh, front. What is this? Some more of that sticky shit. I've already played it in humbucker style, single coil style, and middle, which I never play anyway, but the quacky, quacky style. And uh, damn, this thing's bothering me. Let's get this out of here. I know this is making the video shitty, but I can't help it. That stuff gets on my nerves so bad. Let's see. Finally got all that off. Sorry about that. So one of the things that I'm that I'm noticing as a flaw is if you look down here at this high E, pull this back. This high E string, the fret shaved, that little, you know, the way they, they treat the ends of it is way too close. I'm constantly slipping this off. It's, it's, it's so close. So if you look at the bottom by comparison, this one down here has, I mean, I don't know what the measurement is, but just look at how much space before it's on the edge. This one's just right on top of it. And I mean, if you come down here to the 12th fret counterpart, do you see how much space is there? So like, I'm down here playing a D chord and it's flipping off the edge. Let's see if I can get you to hear it. I'll, I'll, I'll spin this around. Okay, so I haven't set it up yet. It's obviously brand new out of the box, um, but I wanna see if you can maybe see that slip I'm talking about off this tip. See? It's just my natural playing style pulls that. Now I didn't do it down here. That's in um, bridge position, by the way, so. They're stainless steel frets, which is a plus. It's got a very unique tremolo system and the tone isn't horrible. The five-way switch is tilted, by the way. I'm looking down at it, it looks like this. It's not straight up perpendicular to the body. And that bothers me a little bit, but. So.
I can get a little bit. Let's, let's clean it up. Rolling off, it only has two, a tone and a volume. Rolling volume back. See if it cleans up well. Let me play a song that I do a lot of D with. So you even pulling it off. And see, right there too. I'm not noticing it anywhere but down here. It's super close, man. Look at that. It's it's already right there on the edge. They just shaved it too too deep in, or it's either that or the cut right here is too it's it's indented too much on the nut. I may have the nut redone uh from someone and pull it in even further, but it looks like I don't I think the design's a little bit flawed for the tip up there. I'm not sure if it's possible. Take a look at this. I'll let you guys look at that. Can you see that real good? Playability, it's not too bad. It's got some zing to it. It's light, cheap as dirt. I got this thing for what, 175 after taxes? Buzzy, gonna have to be that uh, relief. What I would like you to hear, turn the volume up just a little. Here's the difference, okay? This is, I'm, I was playing that white lines tell me. Now I'm gonna play it on my Les Paul Faded. All right, so this is my Les Paul Faded. You guys have seen the video where I put that um, string butler on. But anyways, this is gonna be, just, just to show you the tone difference between this guitar that I just picked up and this one, so. So there's no falling off when I do the... So if I look at it... Look at the nut and see how much um, string space is available on this one. So this one's obviously the nuts cut about the same spot, but before it starts to dive, there's a decent amount of space right here, real estate right there. That's what it's on the other one. And I don't know if that they're all made like that. So maybe it's an unfair comparison, but I don't change my playing style. I know some of you are going to say, well, you, you need to pull back your tech. No, I don't. I've been playing this way for 40 years. None of my guitars do these. When I pick up a new guitar and it has that thing, it's just not a guitar for me. So that guitar, I don't know if I'm even going to keep it as a backup. I just opened it up. There's good things about it. The price is fantastic. It doesn't feel horrible. It's a dark... I like uh, dark necks like that, like a rosewood kind of. I think it looks that one looks like it's a basswood, maybe. I'm not sure. It's weird that it has a lock in, uh, at the nut, and and yet it still has. You put the you put the pins into. The, I'm gonna show you real quick. It wants you to slide the string balls into the tip. 
That's what she said. But you see that? So you slide those in. I'm not exactly sure how it works. Then clamp it down. And I'm not even 100% sure how it anchors to this if you don't have any locking mechanism like you do at the top. But it's just weird. Um, so light. This would be a perfect backup for my Kiesel Vader whenever I take it out at shows. But one, it doesn't have a floating trim. And I'm almost always going to need a floating trim. I know my Les Paul doesn't either. But, and I can adapt. And again, I use the backups for, for backup. They're not usually the main gig, so. I don't know. Um, you can't beat the price. The scale on it, it feels like it's about a, a Les Paul scale. Not a Les Paul, a Fender Strat scale. So it's probably like a 25. It's stainless steel frets. I don't know if I've already said that. So I, you're paying less than $200 and you're getting a new uh, solid hardtail trim like this that's patent pending and uh, single rod, single truss rod neck. Huh, I don't know. What do you guys think?